Hello friends, this video on life processes part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction What are life processes? Nutrition Wherein we'll talk about modes of nutrition, autotrophic and heterotrophic, nutrition in plants, nutrition in amoeba, nutrition in human beings, respiration, wherein again we'll talk about respiration in plants and in human beings, transportation in plants and in human beings, excretion in plants and in human beings. So let us first try to understand that what is our agenda in this lesson? What are we actually going to study here? The name says life processes. So what does it mean? The processes which lead our life or what are these processes? So let us have a look. Before that, let me ask you one thing. So in biology, we are going to study all about life. Right? So how do we distinguish between a living organism and a non-living organism? For example, on this screen you see that I have divided the screen into two halves. So the one half is dedicated to the non-living things and the other half to the living things. So if you see here, on the left hand side you can see the fan, the bell, chairs, tables, umbrella, guitar, all of these are categorized as non-living. Whereas on the right hand side, we have a man, elephant, rat, birds, trees. So they are all classified as living organisms, right? Now the question is, how do we actually distinguish between which organism is living and which organism is non-living? Now if you take the example of one of these things, for example, if we compare a man with a guitar, so what are the symptoms or what are the signs which tell us that man is a living being whereas a guitar is a non-living thing? Some of the things are a man can move from one place to another, he can move his hands, he can uh, read, he can write, he can run, he can do so many things. So the movement involved with the body tell us that man is a living being and the guitar is not because it is always stationary at a place. Now let us suppose if a man sleeps then how do you distinguish whether the man is a living being or not? So even when a person sleeps there are certain activities which is going on within his body. For example a person breathes when even though he is sleeping. So even if he is sleeping he is not moving his hands, he is not moving his legs, he is not doing anything but still he is breathing. Not only breathing, but there are many other processes which take place inside our body. And because of those processes taking place, we are actually living. So the living organisms actually exist because there are so many processes happening inside them. So do you think that uh, a man or any living organism can live without any food? No, right? If, if we stop eating. So what will happen? We will start becoming weaker and weaker and gradually a day will come where, when we will not be in a position to be alive. Right? So why do we need that food? Because there are so many things happening inside our body. So for that we need energy. And from where do we get that energy? We get that energy from food. Right? So these processes which are taking place inside the body of any living organism are known as life processes. So in this lesson we are going to talk about the different life processes which keep happening inside the body of a living organism. Right? Okay. So now let us see what are life processes. So let us look at the life processes. So as I just mentioned that there are several, several processes which happen inside the body of every living organism and each organism needs energy for various activities for example to move, to reproduce, to breathe. So for doing any kind of activity each and every organism needs energy right. So if not only the examples of animals even if you take the example of plants do you think that plants don't need energy? 
It is not like that. Even plants need energy. Have you ever seen that if you stop putting water to your plants, the plants tend to die. They dry up and they eventually die. Similarly, if you keep the plants in a very dark place where they do not get sunlight, the plants will eventually die. So each living organism have their different energy needs depending upon the structure of their body. Because what is body? Body, the fundamental unit of body is cells. Right? Now each cell needs energy. So every organism will need energy. So how do we define life processes? These are the processes which together perform the maintenance functions which are essential for sustaining life. So as long as so as long as these processes are happening, we say that the living organism is actually living. So that's why you would have seen that when a person dies, what happens? When a person is dead, he is no more breathing. There is no more digestion taking place inside his body. Right? So all the basic activities which used to take place inside his body is not taking place anymore. So as long as these life processes are continuing, the organism is living. So these are the processes which are essential for sustaining life. Now life processes exist in both unicellular and multicellular forms. That is very obvious. For example, whether we consider a very simple organism like um, an amoeba which is made up of one cell. So that one cell has to perform all the functions of the body. So in that case, we do not have any specialized organs. Correct? But in case of multicellular animals, we have cells which are combined into tissues and the tissues are again combined to form different organs and each of these different organs perform different functions. For example, there are some organs which, uh, which are used for respiration, that is for breathing. There are some organisms which are used for uh, digestion. There are some other organs which are used, which are together forming the nervous system. So you, we have specialized organs for, to perform specific functions, right? So basically, these basic processes or these process, life processes are the signs of life. So if any one of them fails, so it can cause a problem to the body. So what kind of processes? Now, when I talk about the life processes, in fact, when we talk about the processes which take place inside our body, what all processes keep happening inside our body? For example, movement. We are able to move our hands, feet, everything. That's because we have the entire muscular system inside the body. Similarly, processes happening inside body, for example, digestion, for example, food intake. So when we take food, there are some processes which keep happening inside the mouth. For example, we chew the food. So the teeth actually helps in masticating the food. Similarly, the saliva also plays its role. So there are so many things which keep happening inside our mouth. We have something called as excretion. What is excretion? It means the removal of waste materials from the body. We have processes like reproduction which keep happening inside our body. There, there are processes like growth. You would have seen that a baby growing into an adult. So how does it grow? It is not that uh, masses or uh, bones or something are, or fats are added on his body externally. It is not like that, right? So the growth also happens internal. Not only that, the absorption of food, that means the food particles which we take in. For example, we consumed rice, right? So what happens to that rice? when it goes inside our mouth. So some processes keep happening inside the mouth. Then it reaches our stomach. So there also there are some processes by which it actually reaches the stomach. So again something happens with that rice even inside the stomach and some energy is produced. So that means there is some conversion of energy from food. So food gets converted into energy. So these are some of the examples of processes which keep happening inside our body. Right? So now if any one of them fails, for example, if I say that the process of digestion fails, then what will happen? Now if the process of digestion fails, whatever food particles we take in, it will not get digested. So the 
person will suffer from indigestion he will fall ill so for the healthy functioning of a living organism all processes has to go on in synchronization with each other right so here whatever examples i have given they are just examples they are not the actual life processes now since there are so many different processes taking place inside the body of a living organism so they have categorized life processes into certain types so that classification we will discuss in the next slide thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again